everyone, it's Froggy, and I'm back again with another episode of Requiescence. So I'm just going to go ahead and start, and as a small recap, we just opened the weird door after reading some creepy note. All right. The tingling sensation briefly jolts through my body, but I quickly step away from the door, and the feeling subsides. It was incredibly dark inside the stairwell, so even the dim light of this room is a welcome sight. I have to blink a little to readjust. If it was so dark before, then how did you read that note? I stepped idly past the threshold, trying to make out shapes in the flickering light of torches on the walls. And then my foot hit something. Something that moves. A hiss comes from beneath my feet. My whole body goes rigid. Slithering on the floor, with his tail right by my boots, is a massive snake. Its head is several feet away from me. Oh dear. The snake rises up to an intimidating height, staring at me with slitted yellow eyes. Its tongue flickers out like a flash of flame. I shoot one hand down to grasp for my sword. My fingers scrape the pommel. No time to think. I have to. It lunges at me. <laughs> Shit. I leap to the side just before it strikes. My fingers finally grasp the pommel of my sword, and I drag it out of its sheath. The sound echoes hollowly throughout the room. I grasp the blade with both hands, raising it up and gritting my teeth. The snake's body twists eerily as its head moves closer. I point the tip of my ornamental blade at the beast with one hand, and raise my other hand, murmuring under my breath. Concentrate. The crackling sound splits through the air. Blue sparks shine from the hilt of my sword curling around the blade. They channel towards the tip, burning brighter and brighter each moment. The snake's eyes are fixed on me. It darts forward. Its fangs glisten. The sparks leap and meet the snake in midair. A harsh noise rings out, the sound of something sharp piercing through the scales and hide. The blue sparks turn into icy daggers, impaling the snake on both sides. The weight of the ice drags it to the floor before it reaches me. I take a step backwards as it writhes by my feet. The sound of its horrible hissing makes me cringe. But soon... The snake goes silent and still. I stand still, ready for it to suddenly start squirming again. The cold magic from my sword leaves a chill in the air, even after the light fades. Tentatively, I prod the serpent with my boot. The life seems to have left its slitted golden eyes. Those fangs. That thing could have probably eaten me in one bite. When I take a closer look at it, I can see its scales are an odd shade of purple, and they gleam almost like gems. And more than that, white patches spread over its hide. I choose to take it as a coincidence, but these patches are becoming a little too strange to just ignore. Exhaling heavily, I sheathe my sword, rolling my shoulders to relieve the tension in them. I haven't fought anything in a long time. I trained a lot with Gideon whenever he was home in between adventures. He helped me harness my magic and channel it using a blade rather than a staff. A blade, he said, was more practical than a staff. You can use it for offense if your magic isn't effective. But training isn't anything like a real fight. Something I learned a few months ago when I killed someone for the first time. He'd been trying to rob me in the alley and threatened me with a knife. Without even thinking, I cast a wave of icicles at him and turned and ran. I didn't see him afterwards, but I don't see how he could have survived the spell. I felt guilty for a few weeks after, but finally I realized the harsh reality. When someone threatens your life, you have to act as fast as you can. I reacted on instinct, and if I hadn't, well, I'd probably be the dead one. 
but that's all in the past. Getting through the cathedral is all I'm worried about now. Or more accurately, it's all I can let myself be worried about. If I'm all alone with my muddy thoughts, I'm afraid my sanity might start slipping away. Clearing my clouded mind with the shake of my head, I turn my attention towards the examining door. I turn my, I turn my attentions toward examining the room. It's a wide chamber, lit by candelabras standing near the walls. Behind a statue in the corner, there's a small set of stairs that lead down into some sort of passage. I can't help but sigh in relief. It's not a dead end. I'm clinging to the hope that I don't run into any dead ends because, well, if I do, I'm as good as dead myself. I exhale a deep breath, calming my still racing heartbeat. Briefly, I glance back over at the snake, just to make sure that it hasn't moved again or anything. Its amethyst hide sticks out against the cold gray floor. The glow from the magical icy crystals sticking out of its scales makes them gleam brightly. It's morbidly beautiful in a way. It's also very dead. Well, no point in lingering. I really don't want to stick around and see if there are any more snakes like that one. I step around the statue and hurry towards the stairs. The hall that I enter is a huge one with a towering arched ceiling and massive statues looming on the walls. The ethereal light from the wall-mounted torches flickers onto the statues, making them look like they're being consumed by a pale fire. It feels so dark and empty in here that it makes my skin crawl. I can sense a lingering magic in the air, but it's oddly stale like something that evaporated and left only a shadow behind. I also can't help but feel that those statues are watching me with their cold, marble eyes. Something about this place feels so twisted. As if everything here is a mockery of itself. Taking a deep breath, I start to move forward. An occasional cool rush of air brushes across my face as I walk. Could this massive hall lead into a cave or the outside? How else could there possibly be a draft? The unnerving silence reminds me of something that I've been trying to put out of my mind. The other person who could be here. Did they pass through this corridor too? That might explain why it feels so unnaturally empty. My muddied thoughts only clear when I hear a crunch under my foot. <laughs> Another piece of parchment, maybe? I squint in the darkness to try and make out the shape. A bone. Attached to it, something large and leathery. A wing? Swallowing my discomfort, I glance around to see if I can glimpse any other parts of whatever this is. Sure enough, there are several dismembered creatures cluttering the dark hallway. Small corpses, only a little over the size of a goblin. They look similar to goblins, and yet they look similar they look similar to goblins, and yet they're not exactly the same. They're shaped like sculpted monstrosities, winged, horned, and hooved. They seem to have leathery skin instead of stone hide, and I can see long gashes that sliced open their sides. Blood spills out gruesomely, pooling on the floor. So it's true. Someone came through this place recently. And whoever or whatever it is, they clearly killed these things with ease. The blood. It looks fresh. Maybe only a few hours old. That means the one who entered before me has to still be here, surely. They've already cleared the path that I've been traveling, except for the snake. Maybe it was sleeping when they passed through. I suppose I'm glad whoever it is has already taken care of these creatures, but I don't like the idea of someone else doing all the dirty work. Sidestepping the monstrous corpses, I carefully start moving forward again, staying alert for any sign of movement. If this explorer is after treasure, 
Like what the monks said, chances are they won't be friendly. I'll fight them if I have to, but I hope they'll listen to what I have to say. But I won't get my hopes up. I've only been walking for a few minutes when a fresh, stronger gust of air flies into me, ruffling my clothes and hair. Soon I can spot an opening not far ahead. I speed up my pace. Finally, I step out from the hewn stone onto the rocky cave floor. It's an abrupt transition and it feels bizarre. The maw of the cave opens up into a rocky, dark, frozen vista, and the way ahead is paved by a rickety wooden bridge. The bridge twists and turns around the corner, dangerously thin, but it's the only way forward. One lone torch stands by the entry to the bridge, attached to a large rock that sticks up from the ground. I move up to the torch and ease it out of its bracket. It's fairly light, and its warmth is a contrast to the cold cave. But since my homeland is in the mountains, I'm so used to the cold that the cave reminds me of home more than anything. It sort of feels nice. The pale flame flickers side to side as I start to quietly make my way down the stone path. It's all very surreal. Just minutes ago, I was in a grand hallway, and now I'm not even sure I'm in the cathedral any longer. Is there any sort of significance to this strange layout? Could it be a result of some kind of magic? Or is it something as simple as a passageway into the mountains? I'd be willing to bet that the monk knows the answer to all of these questions. But I doubt he'll feel like answering them. I have a feeling that he enjoyed seeing me so confused. I just hope that I don't run into any more spirits like him. One was more than enough. As I approach the corner, I hear a new faint sound. It's not from the soft drip of the water from the ceiling, and not from the wind howling. It's distant and hard to make out fully, but it sounds like... Fighting. I freeze in place, tilting my head to try and make out the noise better. It's definitely fighting. I can hear scuffling and shouting echoing in the distance. They're not around the corner, but they can't be further than a minute or two ahead. For a moment, I can't help but wonder if I should really go further. I know I can't turn back, but I could always wait for the fighting to die down, and then try to sneak past. But I want to... No, I have to see who this person that I've been following is. I can't let myself hesitate any longer. I break into a full-on sprint, clutching my torch tightly. I'm not worried about stealthiness anymore. My boots practically glide along the icy stone faster and faster. Somehow I manage to keep my balance, letting my weight carry me forward. My scabbard clinks at my hip with each step. Before long, it's drowned out by the noises that are growing closer. I can hear my own heavy breaths and the dull thud of my footfalls. My nerves are all tingling, burning. My lungs feel like they're full of ice. Every time I take another step, I don't know if I'll be able to take the next. But I do. And that next step comes faster still. And yet every time I round a corner, there's no sign of life. Just more of the bridge coiling on and on out of sight. I race around another corner. They're close now, so close. I slow to a jog to catch my breath, heaving in gasps of air. My stomach burns, my legs ache, but all of that doesn't matter. And somehow my torch hasn't burned out. In fact, it seems to be burning even brighter still. Once I recover my composure, I draw out my sword, keeping the torch in my other hand. I step up from behind the corner, and the first thing I see... <sighs> we'll find out next time. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you want to see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.